am a contractor with Keiko Isom. Keiko Isom is a ag and, f and food company that's been in business for over 85 years. They have headquarters out in uh, Salina, Kansas and Loveland, Colorado, but they have 22 offices throughout the United States. And our uh, core office that we are housed out of is in um, is in Des Moines. Uh, we welcome you here today for our, our meeting that we are um, sponsoring called Best Approaches to Managing Employee Risk and Improving Dairy Performance. Uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about today are some new ideas that you can implement and we have a select panelist that's going to let you know how they are implementing some of these um, strategies as well. Your facilitator for, day, for today is going to be Molly Finsky. Molly is a senior associate with Keiko ISM, and her main responsibility is including conducting on-farm analysis, communicating with clients and potential clients, and co coordinating the on-demand training system um, that, and anywhere else she can help with the event. Um, prior to joining Keiko Isom, she worked as a program manager uh, for Pradium Ventures, and she also worked as an animal welfare specialist at Iowa Select. She graduated from Iowa State University with a Bachelor of Science degree and is currently completing her Master's of Science in Sustainable Food Systems. Please help me welcome Molly Finsky. Thank you very much for the introduction, Carrie. Um, I really appreciate all of you being able to be here today. I know the weather has um, maybe slowed some travel plans. Um, I'm really excited to introduce the panel that we have here today. Um, due to the weather, uh, Liz Griffith wasn't able to be here in person, but she has kindly agreed to um, be on via webinar, so we really appreciate um, Liz being here with us today. Um, Liz Griffith. Griffith is currently the Director of Safety and Employee Recruitment for Tolls Dairies of Nebraska and Wisconsin. Tolls Dairies operates five milking sites, one calf site, and one feedlot with over 300 employees. Liz helps design and implement safety training, leadership training, and improved onboarding systems to help all employees acclimate to their positions within the company. Liz was honored to receive the 2010 um, Dairy Woman of the Year Award as well as the 2010 Ag Woman of the Year. She has three daughters who are also involved in the dairy industry and two beautiful grandchildren. And she resides in Baldwin, Wisconsin with her husband, Dave. Um, next, we have Doug Grotegut, um, and he's here with, us, um, here with us here today, is a third generation co-owner of Grotegut Dairy Farm Incorporated, um, a 2,700 head dairy located in Newton, Wisconsin. And the most unique attribute of Grotegut Dairy is their role as a representative of Wisconsin agriculture in which they provide daily tours of their operation to visitors as an integral part of the new state-of-the-art Farm Wisconsin Discovery Center. How many of you have had the chance to visit this center up um, in Manitowoc? Anybody? Great. Awesome. Um, so the Grotegut family focuses on sustainability through the use of anaerobic digesters, risk management tools, and by opening their doors to teach consumers about agriculture. Um, then next we have Dan Rice. He is the general manager and partner of Prairieland Dairy in Firth, Nebraska. Um, the dairy's mission is to serve people, the cows, and the planet. Prairieland focuses on producing quality specialty milk products, starting with healthy soil, healthy crops, healthy cows, and ultimately healthy milk. Dan is an advocate of animal welfare and is passionate about animals and the environment. So please go ahead and welcome all three of our panelists here today. All right, so as you notice, our topic for today is best approaches to managing employee risk and improving dairy business performance. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about employees, of course, and, and how we can utilize risk management tools to mitigate our risk um, on, for our operations. So for all of my panelists, I'd first like to begin by asking um, why you believe training is important to incorporate into your operations. So I'll start um, with Liz here. Hold on, Liz, I don't think the sound is working. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, obviously, training is important for numerous reasons, um, whether you're focusing just on the employee themselves as far as their safety and their welfare, 
or you're looking at the protocols that you need to utilize on the farm to take care of your cattle, your machinery, um, and other people in the best manner possible. So it's something that's continuous. Uh, you're never done because something we've learned throughout being involved with people over the years is we have to teach them, we have to show them, we have to watch them, and then we have to repeat. So it's never one and done. Thank you. How about you guys over here? What, what was the, why do you believe training is so important for your employees? Doug? Well, I guess uh, it's pretty important for us to uh, have all the employees understand what jobs needs to be done on our dairy. And uh, it gives them a, a feeling that they're, they're part of the team. Uh, you know, if, if you give an employee a job and say, okay, you got to post up cows here for eight hours and he's standing on the other side of the rotary and he don't know exactly why he's post dipping cows or what he's doing, but he's post dipping cows, that job gets pretty, pretty monotonous. So, so by having uh, protocols and procedures and, and training and more training and reason why we need a post dipper and, and uh, we don't normally do that for eight hours, but, but uh, um, they need a reason why they're doing doing jobs, and and uh, that's part of the reason why we do a lot of the training we do. Yeah. And as part of that, what was kind of your motivation, Dan, to um, for employee training? What was your motivation to start an employee training program? So I, I'm involved with animal welfare and do do some animal welfare auditing, and uh, as I got deeper into that, I realized uh, through the the protocol process, it's one thing to have a protocol posted, but it's another thing to have the employees understand and actually do the protocol. So through the audit process, we, we've really, it came to light that we really need to do a lot more training. And that's uh, when we got involved with Cultivate a couple of years ago and really uh, started to, to bring that training to the forefront of our employees. And it's really helped our culture at our dairy. Fantastic. And so Liz, as part of the, the Cultivate program as well, you having over 300 employees, why did you choose this particular program to help manage your risk? Well, first and foremost, it started with all the paperwork we were accumulating. Each time you do training, an employee has to sign that they've actually participated in that training course or procedure. Um, obviously, with that many employees, the stacks start to get higher and higher, and you have the fear of losing something, misplacing something. So this was a wonderful tool for us to incorporate at all of our sites and have everything um, stored online in this system with easy access to it at all times. So we can run reports, we can know who's missing something, um, who you know has maybe taken something twice. It just helps us not only in knowing we've met our basic criteria, but also in selection for someone for a new position. You know, what type of training have they had and what do they need? Thank you. Any other additional comments to add to that of how, I mean, did you guys have a lot of stacked up paper from training and um, being able to utilize that, that part of the system? Yeah, I agree totally with Liz. Um, a lot of paperwork doing training. And the other thing is uh, we do a, a lot of our own crops. And then to get all the part-time guys and all the, the whole staff uh, there at one time for, for a whole group training, is, is really a struggle sometimes. So with the Cultivate program, you can just uh, uh, send certain guys with what uh, videos they need to watch and train and, and they can uh, get that job done on, on either their, their own time if they, they'd like. So a lot of part-time guys will, will say they'll just do it whenever they have time, you know, but you give them a period of how long before they have to have it done um, instead of trying to get all, all the employees together at one time. Yep, Dan? So yeah, I'd, I'd to the cultivate uh, program has really helped us f keep it on the forefront because uh, it reminds you every month of who needs to be recertified in what areas and you know we all have great intentions of of having training meetings every month and doing all those things but unless you uh, get reminded sometimes on the dairy we just get we just get crazy busy and forget so this program has really helped us to, uh, to basically makes you do it and our biggest struggle, I would say, is that we ha you have to have somebody that owns the program, though. Uh, you get an email that says, uh, so-and-so has to be recertified. If you don't uh, 
if you don't act on that, uh, it can you can get behind real quick. But uh, but at least this helps us do that because in the past we've always wanted to do it, and we have great, great intentions, but never got done. Yeah, and and Liz, I know you and I have talked before um, how you utilize the system in your new hire process. But then after going through the the video trainings, how do you kind of follow up um, on those videos? With those employees. Well, we like to also add in some hands-on training. It's something we're still incorporating and getting better at. But, you know, the videos are a great tool. They're in English and Spanish. But then it's nice to actually go see it, go touch it, go mimic it. Um, and again, I agree with these guys with the time factor. It is harder. So sometimes it's one at a time. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's your entire parlor team. It just really depends on the type of training, the situation, and the schedules. Yep. And so from, from all of your perspective, perspectives, um, have you been able to solve any employee issues um, with, with utilizing the training system that have come up throughout the time? I think they become more of part of the team if you spend the time to, to train them and, uh, and go through the program. Uh, I would say the biggest benefits is, uh, so. I'll just give you a brief, brief background on how we use the program. So we have a monthly meeting with all the guys, and um, they're assigned a code to go into the computer and take a watch a video and go through a, a training. Um, every new employee has goes through animal handling and, and a few videos that we've identified as, as general for our farm that we want everybody to see. But then on a monthly basis, everybody goes through one training. and. At that monthly safety meeting, they get a, a code, and they, they have 30 days to go through that uh, training, and then um, we get to see the scores. And then at the next employee meeting, we present them with a certificate of completion. And uh, you know, then the guys, uh, actually, a lot of them hang them up on the wall and, and are pretty proud of their certificate. So that's one way that we, uh, that we use the program. And uh, like I said, as, as they get more certificates, then they're also, we look at that for um, advancement as well. Um, so have you guys noticed any improvement overall in the employee culture um, with u utilizing this program? Oh. I know, Dan, you talked a little bit about, you know, making them feel more part of a team. So would you say that, you know, utilizing this has helped with your employee culture overall? Yeah, I would, I'd say it definitely has, especially around safety. Um, mm -hmm. it, they realize the benefits of safety and because we talk about it a lot more. Before we wanted to talk about it, but now we actually do. All right, so shifting gears a little bit here, um, I know, uh, Doug, you utilize a third-party video monitoring service. Um, how do you use that tool um, to help um, improve your business performance? Well, we use uh, the video monitoring. We had cameras in the past, so we always did do some monitoring, but having a third party come in on, on site and do it uh, just gives you another set of eyes that you don't, you know, you're, you're concerned about your managers um, using the videos and, and uh, stuff. And, and it helps both with the video monitoring and the cultivate that you can show, show the guys the right protocols, the right way uh, to do stuff. You can uh, save video footage. And then also you can, uh, you get busy and you want somebody to uh, uh, really concentrate on the birthing area or the attaching of the units. Um, they can sit, they can spend more time doing that while uh, our managers can keep doing their job. And then uh, you just get a weekly report and it uh, uh, tells you any issues that c come up or, or pro improper procedures or, or whatever. So. Um, the video monitoring part of it works works really well. And how does how does that kind of tie into your relationship with the um, Discovery Center and um, having those tours? Well, like I said, it's it's just another set of eyes, and it, it gives you um, it gives you confidence that you know all your employees are, are trained in proper animal handling and uh, um, that we're we're really in it for the consumer ultimately that we're doing a good job um, taking care of our cattle. And so a little bit about um, kind of the security of the video monitoring program. What do you know kind of about that? Um, well, we didn't have any real issues, so I don't know how secure it is, but <laughs> uh, no, everything, I mean, is totally confidential. Everything uh, 
Uh, you get a weekly report. Um, yeah, yeah, to totally confidential. We never had any issues. But the good thing is, if there is an issue that we don't see, or our managers don't see, or don't know about, they do contact us immediately, and we can get get it handled right away. Great. So in utilizing all of these different programs, can you tell me, have you noticed, um, what do you see for the future of the program as it continues to evolve? The future of either, you know, you kind of talked about both of the programs being able to work simultaneously um, to help um, reduce your risk. Well, I think the more we uh, work together with, with the video monitoring and the Cultivate, and uh, we in Wisconsin, we don't have a whole lot of audits yet. I don't know that anybody's... Uh, have been audited, but even with the audit program, um, it's just another, I think together, using the videos, using the Cultivate for training, um, again, and getting it done. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. We always say we're going to do this and we're going to do that, but like Dan said earlier, you know, we kind of run out of the 24 hours that we have in a day. Um, this kind of forces it on and also it gives us a, a set of eyes, but... Um, so all the programs kind of work hand in hand. And how about for you, Liz? Kind of what do you see as the future of the program and how, as it continues to evolve, what you'll be able to do with it? Well, again, it, the more types of training that are added to the system, um, you know, just speaking for ourselves, you guys have even added some of the videos that we used in conjunction with your own, which is nice. It gives us a variety because as um, one of the gentlemen alluded to, you know, some of this they have to retake each year. You hate to show the same video or do the same thing. So if we can incorporate new tools on there, that's gonna be really helpful to us. Again, adding some more of, you know, the hands-on training, maybe it's tips and ideas for us of what to do. Um, but again, just having that variety to choose from is, is really beneficial for us. Great. How about from you, Dan? Yeah, I agree. I, I think in the future we're going to continue to, the nice thing about the program is you can load your own uh, training on there and on your own videos, so we're going to continue to do that more. But I, I just want to back up a bit and talk about, you know, the title of this was Employee Risk. And I, that's, uh, it might be a little selfish, but that's one of the main reasons that we use this program is for uh, risk mitigation. So we've had animal activists on our farm and, um, you know, if we, if our people are properly trained and we can, we have documentation and proof that they're properly trained, it takes a lot of risk away from, from the owners and, and, uh, managers. And it puts a little more on the employee because we can prove that they were trained and they, they acted, uh, they acted on their own, uh, out of what we, we approve and, and the way they've been trained. So, so that's a big deal. Um, and then the other part of it is, uh, so for us, we went to our insurance company and said, if we do this program, um, will you give us a discount on our insurance? And to be honest, they, it's almost a, a two to one where they gave us a, a double the amount that the program costs. Now, that's not to say you can raise your, your fees, Molly, but it, it did, it is, it, it, it's basically a no cost program for us because our insurance company has given us a discount because we are training our people. And it's, you know, so far it's worked really well because I think our, our incidents of, 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 uh, of, for safety and injuries and so forth have gone down. That's fantastic. And, and you kind of talked a little bit about, you know, being able to train those employees, you know, from an activist standpoint. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you got the email from um, DBA yesterday talking about the person that was going around asking, trying to get a job on a dairy farm. And it's fantastic DBA is able to send those out so we're all aware. But that employee that that person had talked to, clearly went to somebody and let them know, you know, someone kind of asked me some odd questions and I saw their vehicle and kind of working together as an industry to, to mitigate that risk from that standpoint um, is, is great. And so being able to train our employees on how to handle those sort of situations, you know, if you see someone kind of funny walking around your farm, having some sort of reporting system. Do you guys have a reporting system from the kind of a crisis management standpoint for things like that? Yeah, we do actually, each employee that starts with us uh, in their, their first days of training. They, they, they do the animal handling and part of it is, is uh, um, you know, the, the stop and, and uh, see it, say it, you know, tell their managers, you know, if uh, uh, animal abuse or even somebody just driving around, you know, to, to report it to, 
to uh, upper management so we can get it handled right away. Do you guys implement anything like that on your on your operations, Liz? Well, I would say some of that falls, like uh, he just said, into the cattle handling. But one thing that we try to stress and, and probably need to stress more often than not is that every employee on every site has the right to question anybody they see around the farm, even if they don't know who it is, to say, have you checked into the office? Who are you here to see? How can I help you? We want to make sure that every single employee feels comfortable doing that. Yeah, part of this program is that we, we, we've implemented implemented uh, safety vests on our farm, and uh, even visitors have to sign in and get a safety vest. And if they don't have one, then all the employees know to to uh, to call management if someone's on the farm without a, a safety vest. And that's helped us a lot. And we've identified a lot of visitors that probably shouldn't be there. And from um, Doug and Liz being in Wisconsin, have you seen, um, I know there's been a lot of talk around OSHA um, and kind of the crackdown that they're having, especially in the state of Wisconsin. Have you seen or have you had any OSHA inspection where you were able to utilize the, the tracking part of the training system to show, you know, all my employees have been trained on, on such? Well, I can answer, we haven't had an inspection per se yet. Um, we know that could happen at any time. However, it has proved to be valuable when we had somebody with an injury, because even in that case where you have to report that injury to OSHA, we were able to demonstrate, you know, what training this person has been through. Yeah, we, we have not uh, had any OSHA incidences, but, you know, if, if something does happen, I guess we feel pretty confident that we're prepared enough um, that we have all the paperwork and, and with the program, uh, um, everything documented that, you know, we are doing what, what we uh, are supposed to be doing. And so kind of along those lines from a crisis, crisis management standpoint, um, do you all have crisis management plans on your farms? And if so, how do you train your employees on, on that plan so they're prepared for any um, incident? Uh, part of our animal welfare audits is a crisis management plan, so we do training around that and, and have the, all that pro protocols and documentation, and the, all employees have to know what to do in a crisis, yeah. Liz, do you have crisis management plan for your dairies? Yeah, and again, that's part of our continuous training. Um, obviously, part of having a good plan is having a lot of postings up, right? So everyone knows who to call, whether it be a manager, the police, the fire, what's the addresses. But then when you talk about fires and tornadoes and, you know, other types of injuries, we have to have, you know, yearly training on how we deal with that. How do you use a fire extinguisher? How do we keep track of all the employees if there is bad weather and, you know, we're trying to follow a certain crisis plan? Great, thank you. Are there any other um, um, any other comments on um, improving your dairy business performance utilizing the, these programs before I open up um, to questions from the audience? All right, well, thank you so much, panelists. Um, give them a round of applause, please. All right. So um, we're now going to open up um, for questions. Um, feel free to ask any of the panelists questions or myself. Um, up at the, you can feel free to raise your hand and either Carrie or Scott will hand you a microphone. We have one up here in the front corner. Uh, just curious how much input the individual farms have in designing the program and how much of it is just, um, you know, a, a cookie cutter type approach. And then the other question is, with the video monitoring, I, I realize that's something different, but um, are you putting the criteria together for them to look at? You know, are they looking for animal welfare things, or is it more protocol, or is it OSHA concerns, or what, what kind of, um, what are they actually looking for, and do you have a part in that? Yeah, we, we have a big part of that. Um, so with the video monitoring, um, we do set protocols with, with the program who's looking at it, and so they know procedures, they know protocols. 
Uh, they know our animal abuse policy, and, and they are on the same page as we are all the way through, so they're looking for the same things. And then part of that s structure started with, with some of the audit stuff, so we actually did a, uh, I don't even know what you call it, is it a pre-audit? Analysis. Analysis, yeah. so it's basically um, they came in and did an audit, unofficial audit, and said, here's everything you're, you're doing correct and everything you're, you know, you might, might have to change a little things. And uh, so with that, you know, we, we made some changes and, uh, um, but the, those are directly working with the video monitoring. So they're looking for exactly the same thing that, that we are. Great, thank you. And, and Liz, did you wanna to touch on the first question about the, the customizability of the system? Well, again, as I said, we've added a lot of our own videos. As new videos, um, you know, are, are, are currently being developed, whether it be from an outside source or maybe even from our, you know, Bobcat dealer or, you know, John Deere dealers, we want all of that in our, we have a lot to choose from. Um, but then we're always trying to think of new ideas too, which is really good to, you know, share with Molly and see if we, we think of something new that can help as far as training what they may already have or help we customize something to have available to our employees. Dan? I'd just like to add that all the videos are in English and Spanish, and that was a really big help for us because we didn't have the ability to translate into Spanish. What other questions do you guys have around the room? Anything right up here in the front? Hi, Aaron Fitzgerald from U.S. Farmers and Ranchers. So, I, you know, you sound like people putting people first and training is, is paramount to mitigating risk. One of the other things is obviously telling your story uh, about how you are putting people first. Can you can you provide a little characterization about how you're talking about how you care for employees and what you're doing in your community to talk about your role as a small business in your community and providing for employees? Um, well, yeah, I guess, I mean, our, our employees are, are I, I like to call them, it's my farm family, um, because we work day by day, side by side with them, and uh, we do put them first. Um, their safety, their health, their well-being is, is paramount to us, and uh, if, if we succeed, they succeed, and uh, that goes a long way throughout the community, and uh, people looking in on our dairy, we, we have... Uh, like I said, tours tours every day, as Molly uh, had said or earlier, and and uh, you just get the general public driving through your yard. I mean, granted, they're not walking around and and checking everything out, but they visually can see, and and uh, 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 everything's you know, if if the employees are happy and their their uh, well-being is happy, and um, it sure goes a long way in the community. Yeah, we we uh, we do a lot of tours on our farm as well because we're 20 miles out of the out of Lincoln, Nebraska. So uh, um, our employees are a big part of our town, and um, I think the, we don't take that for granted. We we make sure that uh, that they are involved in the community as much as possible. So yeah, I can't say that we go out in the town and really do a lot of promoting our um, how we how we deal with our employees, but that that's a good. Uh, Good point. Maybe we need to be talking about that in, in our business community a little bit. Yeah. I would just add, you know, when every new employee starts, we make it clear that the reason we're doing safety training is because we realize they have a family and we want them to leave work in the same shape or better that they came in. So our goal is to, you know, make sure that they're safe and that they take care of themselves each and every day so that they can go home to their families. We also believe that our employees are the biggest source of telling our story and, and sharing our reputation. So the better we can communicate with our employees, get those messages across, they're going to be our best or worst advocates. Other questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. 
Hi. Uh, I know that probably most people take safety as a big deal to them. Everybody's kind of focused on it. Could you just share one little tiny thing that you might do at your dairy to promote that? Because we all try to do the big things. I'm interested in, is there a little thing that you do that really uh, excites your employees about safety or that shows them that you care and love about them? Yeah, I, I think, uh, as I shared earlier, we all wear safety vests now in our dairy, or high visibility jackets. And when we first started that, everybody thought it was really a dumb idea. But I'll tell you, it, it does make a huge difference because when you look out across the dairy, you can see where, where people are and, and it, it does, it makes them feel a part of it also. So uh, that's, that's one of the things we've done. And I, I just want to take this opportunity and say that, so I have, uh, I have two different friends that have uh, had accidents on their dairy or killed employees. And that really made me take a look at our safety program. That's kind of what drove me to, to get serious about it. Um, I guess we all have a lot of employees, and the last thing that I ever want to do is have a death on my farm. And, and like I said, it happened to two of my close friends, and boy, I just don't ever want that to happen to me. So luckily, we'd never have had that happen. Um, one thing that we do on our farm is, uh, um, I guess the big thing is to, to make them, it's not just in safety training, but in all training is, is you know, sit down and we, we have some pizzas or some chicken or some burgers and, and you know, have a little conversation about, you know, why, why we're doing it. And, and, you know, it's not, okay, you got to do 10 videos today and, and uh, be safe about it, you know, but it's, it's a, you know, more of a, uh, talking about it and, and individually uh, I know we just did some skid steer trainings where yeah they got to watch the video but you know the video is not exactly but then we'll do a walk around the skid steer and uh, actually a little more hands-on with it so I would agree with you know many of the things these gentlemen just said the yellow vest makes a huge difference the really explaining the importance and of course, bringing food to a, a meeting is always, you know, a great benefit. Um, but a lot of accidents that occur, and probably the majority of them, occur because of human error. And so that's why I truly believe that continuous training and coaching is so important because it's still going to happen. You can have the training on the importance of wearing safety glasses, on the importance of wearing, you know, the rubber gloves. Um, on the importance of how you move around cattle, but it's shortcuts people take. It's, it's poor judgment for five seconds. And so just to be out there and always reminding and always coaching is hopefully going to make them safer more of the time. Thank you guys. Um, any other questions from the audience? We've got a few more minutes here. Liz, with the 300 plus employees that you have, um, you keep mentioning about having them go through the videos and things like that. How do you know that they've comprehended that what is going on with it? Is there a testing mechanism that is you also employ with that? And can you um, yep, talk I, about that a little bit? That's great. Sure. And first of all, to go back, because we have several sites, the employees are separated by sites and assign different managers. So that's really also helpful if you just want to look at, you know, one particular dairy and see who's had what training or who's missing what training. It's a lot easier to do than going through all 300 names. But we do have test questions set up. The really nice and unique thing about this system is as the videos are in English and Spanish, the test questions are also in English or Spanish. But then we also know that unfortunately some people can't read. So the questions can also be audio. So again, it just helps us and helps them feel comfortable to complete and pass the training and have that understanding. Great question. Any other questions from the audience? So I, have a, I just have a quick comment. So we're a much smaller operation than these other two. And my, my children are uh, managing most departments in our, in our dairy now. So, and they just don't understand why, um, you know, let's just take an example of a gate get, keeps getting hit with a skid loader or something like that. 
And I, you know, my message to them always is it's not the employee's fault, it's our fault for not doing proper training because you know, we bring these people in and my kids have been ra born and raised there and they, they know how to do all these things. But we bring a guy that uh, just came from Mexico and never uh, drove a piece of equipment and we put him on a $180,000 payloader and expect him to know how to drive it uh, without proper training. And, and we, we're guilty of doing that all the time. And then we get upset when they break it. So um, if, if we have employees breaking things, then I always throw it back to the mat, uh, my kids and say, well, you know, we, didn't, we didn't do our part. We didn't train them properly. So that, that's one of the things that we tr try to communicate with our middle management. Thanks. Um, anything else from the audience? Before I wrap up? All right, well, Molly, oh. uh, just one thing, Doug mentioned it earlier as well. Um, he said he wanted to know the why, and that's what you wanted your employees to know is the why. Why are we asking you to do it a certain way, which was really helps in the benefit of customizing both programs to what you need. You've talked a lot about the risk mitigation side of things, but what about those? Have you um, congratulated those that have actually done the protocols right, right? Have you utilized the training and the video monitoring to be able to tell them that this is the right way, um, we appreciate that, and actually um, giving them some accolades uh, from doing it correct as well? Yeah, I think that's kind of like Dan said earlier, that's, that's part of their, their um, you know, when we do reviews, you know, uh, I'm hoping my management team is, is telling them, you know, you did a good job and, and that's why we can give you a pay raise or, or you know, maybe you're a little off, but, but yeah, you got to, um, you know, s state the positives, all, all the things they do do. And, uh, and it does, with the video monitoring, it sure, sure does help uh, point those areas out if they're doing a, a good job. I like as a manager seeing, you know, I, I'm not there spending the time with the employees like my, my nephew and his wife and um, they're there day on and day off with, you know, every day of the week with, with employees and, and I get the video monitoring to my desk and I might have not, I don't even know all their names to tell you the truth, um, but I see, I see that, you know, Milker A at spot A at this time was doing the right job and, and if I see 95% of that doing the protocols and procedures right, I'm pretty happy. If, if a guy's off his mat, well, he's off his parlor mat milking, and maybe he got behind, maybe he's pre-dipping or, or wiping the cows or stripping off his mat a little. It's probably not the world's biggest deal, but as, as long as I see 90, 95% of those all, all in the green, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied, and uh, I hope that's getting back. I mean, I, I thank all my employees uh, from the bottom of my heart. But uh, I'm hoping my managers are doing the same thing. Thank you. Um, any, any last comment? Oh, Liz, did you have something to say? Yeah, I'll just add, you know, that's something we're um, continually working on is, is the feedback piece. Because it's really easy to catch the wrong things, right? Um, you know, whether we've been raised in this field, we know what's right, we know what's wrong, and, and we're quick to make judgment. But to just you know, daily, weekly, giving that positive feedback really brings an employee up and makes them want to do better. So, um, you know, that's just another aspect of, of all of this is, is catch them being good too. Even if they are doing something wrong, find the good that they are doing and, and help retrain them and coach them. Anything from the audience before we go ahead and wrap up? Any other last comments from the panelists? All right, well, thank you guys so much for being here with us today. We appreciate it. Um, if any of you have any additional questions, feel, please feel free to um, talk to myself or, or Carrie over here and also uh, Jake Taylor in the front. Um, and there's some um, things on your tables there as well. Thank you.